Geek Week in Review, episode 35. And of course, we are going to discuss that concluding episode of The Book of Boba Fett. Stay tuned for more. The Geek Week in Review. Hello and welcome back to the Geek Week in Review, episode 35. With me, Jacob's Toys, of course, the wonderful one and only Super Sorrel, and of course, Ryan Speaks Geek. If you're watching on YouTube, then please do like, share, subscribe, and all of those things. Check the details below for the gents' details, um, and of course, give them a follow if you don't already do so. And if you are one of our podcast listeners, then we very much do appreciate you, and please do continue to download share and all of those things and we've got a little bit of exciting news this week because we've kind of officially moved the geek week over to facebook and instagram as well we had a couple of people get in touch and say about those platforms and sharing things on those platforms we thought why not and we created a a facebook and an instagram account for the geek week in review so if you're on those platforms then please do give us a follow um, and do of course share from there as well it's very much appreciated but the details are on the screen now for those that was even more of a mouthful than normally because <laughs> I had to do more. But it's been a good week. Good week. Yes. Um, we were saying before, relatively quiet, but not quiet. There's kind of been, been little, yeah, little bits, but significant bits. So do we, do, do we, we want to do... Us, we got to start with the thing that everyone wants, that he's expecting us to talk about. Jurassic Park trailer. Yeah. <laughs> let's start naturally, with Jurassic Park trailer. Na- natu- na- naturally after six weeks of Book of Boba Fett people think they're going to start with Jurassic Park and I know it you know what <laughs> I have no problem with starting with a Jurassic Park trailer because I'm a massive Jurassic Park Jurassic World oh, Jurassic sorry. World it, listen if you're of a certain it's age Park. it's Jurassic yeah. Park right it is, I, I have this argument all the time when I'm like oh Jurassic Park a new Jurassic Park's coming out they're like Jurassic World I'm like no Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park. Right? It's like, especially welcome. if you've got Jeff Goldblum Jurassic in Park. it yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I um I must admit, even though I said I was a big fan, I didn't have the date put aside. Like I didn't have in in my mind the date that that trailer was coming out. Um, I knew we would do it, but it just kind of popped up online all of a sudden. And I'm always a little bit skeptical sometimes because there's a lot of websites out there that do really good kind of fan cuts and kind of fan concept, isn't it, of, of traders and stuff. So you see one or two pop up, like official, whatever, whatever, and you just end up watching kind of three minutes of films that you've already seen but obviously the the jurassic world um domination is it called um, domination dominion 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 domination jurassic world d (laughs) it's jurassic jurassic (laughs) jurassic 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 park six all right (laughs) yeah sorry it's now called the dinosaur it's now because of the the dinosaurs have taken over the planet based on the sounds of it and it's now their dominion they now make sense they are now the alpha of the planet it's uh, uh it's, it's chaos is what it is uh, <laughs> and, uh it's uh uh you, you you packaged up you sold it and uh, uh that's it you sold it and it, it and it, it's <laughs> chaos <laughs> everywhere <laughs> everywhere but jurassic park six is what i'm going to call it from now on <clears throat> um but yeah i mean so what what did you guys make of it what, what did you gents think of the uh the trailer baby blue I'm excited baby blue it's as soon as I saw a baby Velociraptor, I was like, they've done it, haven't they? They've just followed that that tried and tested formula of throwing a baby something into it and we're going to sell merchandise. And you proven, I watched the trailer with my son afterwards and the minute Baby Blue came on, my son went, oh, it's a baby dinosaur. I was like, there was baby T-Rexes in Jurassic Park 2, right? But no one like went mad for that. So, <laughs> but yeah. Do you know what the funny thing is? I annoyed myself by answering my own question when I watched it. Because I, how is there a baby Velociraptor? There's only one Velociraptor left. And then I, in my own head, uh, Jeff Goldblum was like, uh, "Life uh, finds a way." I know that, that's it. I answered my own question by my, quoting myself in my head. So, but is there actually one Velociraptor left? Because in the trailer we see quite a few. I'm guessing there's some kind of. From what I can gather, I think hyper real dinosaurs because you see the dinosaurs with all the feathers on i'm guessing yeah. old blue's been a bit of a d-bag once again and uh you know decided to make lots of dinosaurs but maybe more genetically accurate dinosaurs with feathers that's and what, stuff yeah that's yeah. what i was thinking because obviously when they made jurassic park they we didn't we didn't have the we didn't know the velociraptors were covered in feathers like we do now mm. uh, we didn't we didn't know that and obviously they got away with it because they explained that it was 
the dinosaurs were made with the frog DNA. That's how they always got around it, them looking over reptilian. Mm. Um, that was obviously easy, easier to make as well in animatronic form. But now we've got that feathery looking dinosaur in this trailer. I, I was thinking the same as Ryan. I wonder whether they've just like genet like they've because they've been away for so long, they've just mated and mated and mated to the point where they've basically got rid of the like the the wrong genetics and they've just become more like purebred, if you want to call yeah. it that. That's the doctor's um thing in Jurassic World, isn't it? When he's having with mm. um Maserani and he's like, you know, you know, none, nothing in Jurassic Park is real. You know, if I actually did dinosaurs the way dinosaurs actually looked. They would all look very different, you know. And he makes that point yeah. of saying that in the first Jurassic World or Jurassic Park four. But there's no, there's no real concept of time, is there? In the trailer, there's nothing that shows how much time has gone past apart the kids from the fact older. that Woo, yeah, but Woo's got really long hair as well. So mm. that to me shows it's been at least a year because his hair's kind of gone down here. Or a good transplant. <laughs> There's that. There is that. When we left them as well, it looked like it was like summertime because now we're obviously in winter because they've got lots of snow scenes and things like that, mm. which will play into the big thing because obviously the dinosaurs they can't survive in that temperature. Mm. Have you have you been you see, watching Camp film. Cretaceous? Yeah, I'm mm. up to date on that. I love it. Yeah, because I've I, I'm a couple of episodes behind. So there were they were on season three. Season four. Four. Yeah, four, and these that's the one spoilers ahead if anyone is following <laughs> it, but it's been out for quite a while, so you should have watched it. Um, but this is the one where they're on the island and there's all the weird sci fi rooms and the robo dogs and that kind of stuff. Does have you finished the season now? Have yep. you, have you, yeah, does that tie into anything that potentially could lead into this new film, or is yeah. it just a big open ended we're going to bring Godzilla in next? I think time it more thing? ties into the fallen kingdom one doesn't it does it i think so um my my biggest bugbear with fallen kingdom uh i this complete tangent because we're talking about camera pleasures i know but just because i mentioned the the name of it so i'm gonna say it uh was i you had a perfect setup for a movie which is what the trailer's gonna make out like which is escape from dino island that's going you know with an active volcano and they made that like 10 percent of the film and the rest yeah. was in the mansion it's like but you didn't need it. You, a whole film escaping a, an exploding island full of dinosaurs. Why did we not get a whole film of that? How is yeah. that not the most awesome thing ever? What's the better thing about Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park where there's also lava. <laughs> now we've added lava. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I do agree. I do agree. They should have split that a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, no, I just wondered because... Obviously, with Camp Cretaceous, it kind of weaved in and around the films, didn't it? With like the Indominus and then the Scorpius Rex in the background, but then there was kind of links to things that had happened or were happening in the film. Um, and because I haven't completed yeah. season four, I wondered whether there was any kind of tie in to hint to what we're going to get from Dominion. I think they'll keep it very separate so they can, because I think the, by the sounds of what this film is, I think this is the the concluding chapter they keep saying on the trailer, the concluding chapter of the yeah, that's So I think we'll want to keep the animated thing going for a while yet, because it's making yeah. a lot of money and a lot of toys for Mattel is out of it. So I've yeah. got a feeling they'll probably want to keep the two separate. It might, you might see that season five of the next show probably has links to the film. But I don't think it'll ever be that the film will have links to Camp Cretaceous. It'll always be Camp Cretaceous having links to the film. No. You're never going to see them kids in live action, I don't know. No, of course you won't. No, no, no. You never but then know. Again, Star we, Wars has done it, you never know. We probably Into said the, the same verse. about Clone Wars, didn't we, back in the day. Um, but there's a lot of cameos or, or, or new old characters brought back into this one. And obviously we've seen a lot of them in the trailer. Um, and without a doubt, I cannot wait to see a certain, a certain character back on the screen. And that's the doll of stories. <laughs> you know, forget about Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler. As soon as that, I was like, yes. <laughs> I've waited like nearly 30 years for you to come back and you're back. Amazing dancer, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was, that. even though it's completely inaccurate and like factually incorrect and all the rest <laughs> of it, it was like, yeah, a big frilly lizard kind of thing that spat venom. Screams at you. <laughs> you know what? Sign Jaws was inaccurate to real sharks and I could live with that. Yeah. Same with Jurassic yeah. Park. <laughs> yeah it's very true that is very true but no but you know we i did joke but obviously we do see alan grant back we see um eddie sattler and of course we see the infamous ian malcolm um didn't bring samuel <laughs> jackson back unfortunately <laughs> That'd be with, good. One, with a, with a Some, robot arm somehow um, like yeah well, this is dead 
Well, you know, the yeah, interesting thing dead. about his scene. <laughs> he did die. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking that he's dead. Isn't he? I was gonna, mate, so are the dinosaurs. Is, that's, that's so are the dinosaurs. He only had his go. arm. A clone of yeah. yeah, Samuel Jackson's and Dennis Just, Nedry's. A, a whole, a whole <laughs> island. Of, uh, what was he Dennis, called in it? What was his name? I completely forget his name. Mr. Is, uh, Johnson or something like that. Yeah, I can't who? remember. Oh, I just, it's just Samuel Wilson? Jackson. Like, I always refer to him as Samuel Jackson. The whole island of him. Oh, welcome the chain, to the chain welcome smoking to man. Samuel R. Jackson <laughs> Park. <laughs> yeah, I would like but, to see an island of Dennis Nedry's. Maybe that would be quite. Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, no. We got dots in here. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I'm I'm really excited that they're bringing back that kind of original trio because, you know. All jokes aside, they were fantastic as three characters on a, on the screen. And when I think about Jurassic Park as a kid, as a as a film uh, enthusiast and all that kind of stuff, I think of those three before the T Rex or before the Dilophosaurus. It's, it's Alan Grant, it's Eddie Sattler, it's, it's Ian Malcolm, you know. And it's so to see them guys back on screen, and I love the little um, kind of joke where there was the whole kind of setup on the screen. And they both sort oh, of said Chris the same Pratt line. And yeah. Don't and move. I, was, I was like, that's brilliant because obviously um, Owen's character is the kind of the modern version of Ian Gra- uh, Alan Grant um, for, for the new generation. He's the, you know, the, the main male hero or whatever in the film, but to have those two side by side and to do the, that kind of joke just, just cracked me up. And I've got to admit, I'm, I absolutely love Jurassic Part 1, Jurassic Part 2, Jurassic Part 3. Like As films, I absolutely love them because of the the different characters that they brought into it. So obviously Ian Malcolm being in the second one, Alan Grant being in the third one. They, that made them, oh yeah, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? But that made them good films for me. So I was kind of like, you know, I, just I love the whole. We, I just wish we ever had a storyline where the two kids came back to protect their grandfather's legacy or something. That never happened. We've never, like... Obviously, he's uh, he died, and then we, this other company just took over, and now that's it. There's no one trying to protect his original legacy or anything in this, which I always thought the two grandkids could have done. That could have been a really cool story. They're line. both really up for it as well, because obviously he mm. was in um, Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. Yeah, he was. Uh, like, you know, which is crazy. Um, and she, you know, had been quite open online about saying that she would love to return. So I wonder if they'll do like a little maybe cameo with them or something. Like, I know, like... wonder whether they're in it because they did in Jurassic Park two, didn't they? Yeah, they're, they're little two, the they, they, yeah. Two, they run down the stairs, don't they? Yeah. So I do wonder whether they're the kind of the Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield moment where mm-hmm. everyone's going to kind of go, why aren't they in it? Oh, they're in it. Like, you know, um, and that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, and uh, Ian Malcolm's daughter as well. It'd be good to have her back in it. She was in the... Uh, Shouting at Velociraptors. Hey! Yeah, doing <laughs> some gymnastics and stuff. Um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll get Billy from, you know, Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. <laughs> just all of them just bring them all just, in yeah but yeah but no i'm i'm excited i'm excited um but yeah there wasn't a huge amount to unpack was there from the trailer like you you know that there were some beautiful scenes you know with owen kind of heard in the um paracephalosaurus are they with a big horn yeah. on their head um like heard in those ones and then like you say the kind of realistic velociraptor that that velociraptor and it didn't look like T-Rex, but there's two big dinosaurs kind of in what looks like Rome or somewhere like Venice or somewhere like that. You know, the Largosaurus. The, the Largosaurus, yeah. Did you um, see that they're clearly building another Jurassic Park because they were another. There was another bit with the like an island with the mm-hmm. set up and that, and obviously Jurassic World's gone. Yeah. So I wonder. Now been destroyed. My money still. is on rival company. You know the one they keep talking about in. Um, in Camp Cretaceous, uh, yeah. whatever industries, yeah. I reckon it's their version. It'd be a smart move to include them because even though it doesn't cross over directly, it's a it, it's a storyline or a narrative that we've been familiar with because of what well, if they're making human park for the dinosaurs to be <laughs> human? Well, I just wondered <laughs> that. Like, if, if, <laughs> if you if you were like living in a world where there was dinosaurs <laughs> running around human everywhere. Park. Would, would you, would you really pay to go and see dinosaurs in cages? It's kind of like, or is it just safer? It's, no, I don't think it's a park. I don't think it's a park yeah. like that. I think it's more of a containment facility. I think they're trying to, you know, like in Jurassic Park Two when they were trying to capture the dinosaurs to like take. Yeah. Them. I wonder whether it's going to be that kind of a story where they're hunting the dinosaurs down and kind of trying to get them back in containment. 
So that Maybe human, one so that, island where they all live on or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then that can have a volcano and we'll finally get that movie that we... Was, <laughs> did, did, did we ever find out... Did, did D'Onofrio's character die? Because he escaped in the plane, in the no, helicopter, didn't he? No, 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 no. That was Dr. Wu. He went back down, tried to talk to Owen and that about the uh, the military things and the raptors yeah. came in and he tried to be like, it's me, you recognise me. Bit his hand off, which was quite graphic, which was awesome. And yeah. then they jump in on the freezer, and then he definitely dies. Oh, all right, cool. He definitely yeah, does. Never bring that's the old classic there. blood splatter across the screen, like you know. Yeah, that person's that's dead. I wonder whether uh, I wonder what Wu's involvement's going to be because we saw him in the trailer. So clearly, he's got a heavy involvement in it, and he's like one of the only characters that's kind of been in the film since the beginning, really, isn't he? Like that, he'll be the root of the problems. But I think he'll die in this one. Yeah, you reckon? I, feel he'll get his, I wonder yeah, whether he's come up and. I wonder whether he's going to be, you know, he's going to have a, a, a turn and he's going to be a, a good guy now and he's going to hold the key to killing them all off. I don't right. know, because he was a B, you know, he was an absolute, uh, yeah. I can't remember is... if we swear on this show or not, but like, you know, he was not <laughs> a, he was an impolite man in Camper Cretaceous and he was very, he was happy to let kids get eaten in Camper Cretaceous, so I kind of feel like he's not going to have yeah. that much of a character turn. There is a way of killing the dinosaurs, though. <laughs> they always built that into them. That was something COVID. that was said in the first film, wasn't it? COVID. No. <laughs> they've, they've built into the, the, in the first the film. It mentions variant. They, can, they, can give them, <laughs> they can give them a certain um, enzyme and it would kill them. Yeah, they, that was... they, they deny them a certain protein or something they said. It was in the first film. There was a way because yeah. the you stop, that. Fe- you stop feeding them and they'll all die. No, <laughs> no, there was a thing. There was a thing in the first film. I'm gonna look it up now. Yeah, no, I'm googling he, that. He, he is actually right. It, it, there was an in, there was a failsafe built into it. However, I think the argument was that that nature sort of takes its way and yeah. the enzyme then becomes irrelevant and it uh, it still somehow makes them survive. Because I think it was Jurassic World. They were talking about the enzyme as well. Yeah, uh, right, the know, lysine. The Lysine contingency is what Dr. Wu called it. Well, yeah. there was an interesting there was an interesting bit of dialogue though that Owen said because it, they're obviously trying to reunite blue with turquoise or just whatever the baby's <laughs> called. Um, but they're obviously trying to reunite them or kind of get them together. And he says something along the lines of if we don't find her, they'll get her and we'll never see her again, or something like that. It, it's something along those lines. It implies that if they don't step in and help, then somebody else is gonna take her and That'll be that. So was I wonder if, that if he was talking about part, the little or... girl. Because the little girl's a clone, remember? That was a big yeah. thing of the last film. Oh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, then why are you watching this? Go away. <laughs> um, but like the yeah. uh, um, but you know, the, the little girl was a clone, and that was a whole big thing in that last one. They were trying to keep her secret at the end of the film. They took her with her. And it looks like Jurassic, there was some Jurassic cabin. World, Clone Wars. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Crossover event no one wanted. Um, yeah. But do you remember when they originally announced Jurassic World as a concept? There was the whole weaponized dinosaurs, and there was all the artwork online of like Triceratops with machine guns on the top and stuff. Like, it was nuts. Yeah, I hope we kind of see it. it. Reminded me very much of Dino Riders. Do you remember Dino Riders? Yeah, I remember Dino Riders. Where's our Dino Riders movie? Come on, we've had Transformers, we've had Jurassic World. Give us Dino Riders. They were the we chunkiest. Oh, don't, don't get me started on masks. Dino Riders, mask, like they would be brilliant. Like, even a Street Mighty Max Shocks. film, I'd go for. Like, just, Mighty, Mighty Max would be even awesome. a Mighty, Max, Mighty should, Max film. Should come back as a toy line and cartoon again because it was educational as well. We've had oh, Dora the Explorer turned into like a Indiana Jones esque film. Like, come on, if we can do Dora the Explorer, you can do mask or you can, can do Dino Riders. Can you say map? <laughs> or centurions do you remember centurions yeah i can say centurions the, the three of them with the there was one called jake so i really loved that cartoon um one with a big handlebar mustache and then you just it just like it that was just the worst idea like i'll make an action figure full of holes and just give them stuff they can stick in the holes and call them like centurions which and we bought the, into it which was just the do that as a <laughs> Which was the, the little toys where they were like basically fu- futuristic like American football players and they were about this big, like little oh. like just like flesh tone coloured little m- figures. Wasn't yeah, there? I remember. Remember not them? Mon- not monster in yeah. my pocket. They were like it was like that, that, wasn't it? But it, they, they had their own cartoon and everything. Yeah. And it was basically American football in space. 
Yeah. Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you one? Like, weird cards, right, man. we're we're on a we're on a nostalgia <laughs> trip now. Sorry, this episode is going to last two and a half hours. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. But um, something I'd love to see modernized is um, visionaries. Do you remember visionaries? Mm. Where they had like the hologram things on their chest. Yeah, and they were awesome. It would. With today's it, technology, you could do a lot of oh, stuff with them. But they they came out right in the height of those kind of holographic things being the height of popularity you could get them as stickers and then they later released them as like mobile phone cases but these toys had them for anyone that doesn't know they were essentially like armored figures like 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 medieval kind of armor wasn't it and on and in the middle they had this big kind of hologram that had a different animal and then the character could kind of do this <laughs> and then turn into a hologram version of that animal and they all had stuff that represented their do you remember the gauntlet? Get... Do you remember yeah, the original episode? Yeah, but can we just get another, another go of um, how that guy... What did they do? To... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> they did this. That, that's no, the but clip they... to promote the show right <laughs> there. Just Jake <laughs> going did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they did. They had the, the gauntlet, didn't they? Where they all had to get to the middle. And then mm. whatever tactic they used, they got that... Oh, that was... I'm going to go and watch that on YouTube. It's got to be on YouTube. It's probably it's crap. Funny. Like it's probably rubbish. But I remember as a kid just being. I don't know. And I the watched Transformers that original. Cartoon still holds up. Yeah, that's true. But I watched that original episode probably a hundred times. Like I knew it word for word at one point. Just I think I had it as like a the pilot episode on VHS, and so that was my. But yeah, give us a visionaries film. That'd be amazing. <laughs> just don't don't cast like Robert Downey Jr. and whatnot. Like just like, give us give us some some fresh blood. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going off on a trip. So that was <laughs> Jurassic World. Um I don't think there's much more to say about that trailer, but it does look very good. And it's not long to wait now, is it? It was June, June, June. I think it was. Um so not long at all. Uh definitely going to be running out and seeing that as soon as it comes out. Other big trailer though. Did you see the DC trailer which had Black Adam, The Flash, Aquaman, <sighs> yes. Dr. Fate, like, Hawkman. Yeah. Yeah, um, the whole whole shebang, didn't it? Like that actually I'm was cool. A bit over DC. I'm just gonna say Are they 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 ruined their cinematic universe. They <laughs> no, but they did. They did. <laughs> Look at your chair, Ryan. Are you on like a throne? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just limp forward yeah. and you're on like <laughs> a throne. <laughs> it's like the big brother chair. Like <laughs> sorry. Are you guys sitting in gamers' chairs while not playing games? At least I'm doing what <laughs> no, I'm, I'm meant to be doing. I'm in an office chair. I'm in my I'm office chair because yeah. I'm in my office. Although Mate, I probably will get a gaming chair. You've heard of dress for the job you want. I sit for the job I want. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, he's this big brother. Can Ryan please come to the diary room? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm who a chair is he? Here. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, who I'm do they think they are? But. Back to DC, I am a little bit... Like, I think Flash looks incredible, and I think Black Adam is going to be really good. Aquaman, for me, this is my personal opinion, but Aquaman, for me, has been the thing that's held it together. Like, Aquaman was an incredible film. Um, I, we call it Aquaman, don't we? But it's DC's Thor, let's be honest. Yeah. They saw what Thor was doing and went, we can do that because he's a funny guy. Yeah, <laughs> they just, just literally just copied it. <laughs> That's that's the you problem. Know, and was the first Aquaman before or after Ragnarok? Yes. No. So basically, the main... <laughs> I, gave you two, I gave you two options and you said yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. He came after <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. So sorry, I thought right, I yeah, it came he on. came after <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. So yeah, Thor Ragnarok came out. They made yes. Thor a bit stupid and a bit funny, and then basically Aquaman came out and did the exact same thing. Yeah. I I, I just think that it's and I, I know. Smart and... I know there's so much controversy that goes around with it. A Wonder Woman was good as well, actually. I'll give it that. That's Wonder Woman was incredible, awesome. except the second one. Wonder Woman, I, yeah. just no, just don't, don't, don't. Still not seen it. You know, well, that's the thing, and I think that's what speaks <laughs> volumes for DC films. Is I haven't seen the second Wonder Woman film, but I don't feel like I've missed anything. You haven't, and oh. that's <laughs> but that's what I mean, and that's where I think it's a real shame. Is they're kind of where Marvel movies were back when everyone owned Marvel. Do you know what I mean? When they were kind of, they all had their own separate universes. Um, and I just the think it's a shame. Squad, though. That is Suicide brilliant. Squad, though. Suicide Squad element of DC has been very good. Both, mm. I, I enjoyed both versions, but I wouldn't rank them in like my top films of all time or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? They were, I enjoyed them. They were good fun, but. To be fair, none of the Marvel films are in my top ones of all time. No, okay. That's each their own. But um, <laughs> going <laughs> That was the nicest way of saying I, you're wrong, but um... eject Ryan. Uh, no, going, but going I'm forward though, Wars haven't they? <laughs> haven't they announced now that basically Justice League no longer exists in canon? 
And isn't it yeah. isn't it a case of Batman is Michael Keaton from the Flash film, and yeah. that he's going to get written out, and then they're going to use Batgirl as the new Batman? Isn't that yeah. where they're going now? Yeah, you know the, the, I that think the stupid. Flash the Flash film is I... going to rewrite it all. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I actually, it sounds really bad. I don't care. <laughs> I no. No, I just don't like. Uh, you know, I'm sort of, I am a little bit done with the, the overlinking of everything anyway. You know, I've, I've expressed my thoughts on this uh, loads, but like, I am done with it. I just, I now go to enjoy the specific film as it is. I, I'm yeah. stopping looking at things as link pieces. I'm not like, I'm not bothered about what universe something is in anymore. I just, I can't do it anymore. I'm done with it. It's like the books. No. I'm reading Star well, Wars books from the 90s that I still love. And I can't read it going, oh, but that's not canon anymore. This isn't canon. This isn't, canon's yeah. what you make it. Everyone can make their own head canon. Just go for that. Well, I think that, the thing. that, but that's the problem is that think about, think about Batman, right? So before we had the MCU, before we had Iron Man, before we had all of those things, um, before we even really had Spider-Man, we had all of those different variant versions of Batman. And he was car- recast every film or every two films. Hmm. No one really cared. Everyone was like, oh, he's a new Batman. This one's got Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Carrey. It's going to be a winner. Like, you know, but yeah. people didn't care. Whereas nowadays, like, oh, Ben Affleck's not going to play Batman. Oh, I've ruined it. And it's like, no, you know what? Back in the day, they, they recast him every couple of movies. Um, and I think that's the mistake that a lot of films make is that they try to copy what the Marvel Cinematic Universe has done. Yeah. Don't try to copy it. Leave it as it is. Marvel has cornered that market. So let's do it something different. Think think about Universal as well. The dark was it dark universe dark that they universe. tried to start yeah. on paper that had gold written all over it. And then they, they started it twice, didn't they? <laughs> they cast Tom Cruise in the mummy, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> but that that is a concept to have all of these, you know. Marvel uh, Universal Monsters kind of tied into one big universe was just something that all of the horror fans from 70s, 80s, and even the 90s have been waiting for. And they, they just, they, they tried too hard with it and messed it up. They are picking it back up. Good. Um, it is going to happen. Uh, apparently, from what I last read, Rob Zombie has been linked to the project. He wants to finish Monsters off. Folks. He's making a remake of the Monsters right now. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, saying that. I'm unsure about that. Yeah, once he's finished with the monsters, then they've said that he he is Universal's top pick to basically write and, and like be the top man of the uh, dark verse or whatever yeah. you're calling it. But they're not going to start with. They're going to just basically. I think they should. From from what I understand, they're going to do what what Spider Man did, which was you already know who Dracula is, you already know who Frankenstein is. You don't need an origin story. You just need them yeah. to jump in with a movie and go right monsters because <laughs> yeah. everyone knows who they are of course yeah yeah of you course don't need a bunch of films well, building they, a monster flick they the mummy wasn't a on. bad action film but it wasn't a monster flick see to no. me i still love to this day van helsing because it didn't do that yeah. it, yes. it just it basically went you know who these people are jump in here's some fun yeah <laughs> i, I love that i'm movie. gonna <laughs> i was gonna say van helsing i absolutely love they Enjoy should that. have carried it on from there <laughs> i'm gonna take it one step further back I even enjoyed the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes, lovely. Now, yeah, if they had carried on with that, if they'd mm. carried on with that kind of concept, they would have been onto a winner, I think. Um, but you know, they didn't. So hey ho. But I think that that's the problem DC is facing is that everyone's expecting. So I've got like it's random hair in my eye. Um, everyone's expecting them to copy the MCU, and it's like, oh, what's what's Flash setting up? Oh, who ties into Aquaman? Why have they recast Batman as? the guy from twilight like it's all this kind of stuff and i think they people need to just enjoy it for what it is and i hope that as a fan of the flashpoint comics i hope that they don't try too hard to kind of erase their mistakes and bring everything i hope they just put it for what it is um but i think i think dc missed a real trick because they had the television market covered like with arrow with flash Mm. with legends of tomorrow they had that console team. They really did have that cornered, and they were they were up against Agents of Shield. Essentially, that was the only kind of Marvel offering we had. Marvel offering we had at the time, and they kind of slept on it too long and made it too sort of I want to say comic booky, but in a bad way. And then that's when we got the things like Daredevil and all that kind of stuff that kind of went went back to the roots. Like you look at the original Arrow series. They took a, a relatively uncool character in in the sort of generic fans' oh, viewpoint. Robin Hood. Yeah, essentially a glamped up Robin Hood and turned him into a really cool 
like concept and so many people bought into it and they just it's almost like they just kind of went eh, well we're done with that like so I think they should have cornered the market of the television. I think they should have included Superman. They should have included Batman. And they've tried too late by doing things like Superman and Lois and Supergirl. Now they should have thrown those in, taken their big, their big chips like Wonder Woman, Batman, and introduced them into the television universe and just dominated the, the, the weekly episode market. They do and there we go. absolutely dominate <laughs> in animated movies, though, yes. in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, the definitely. animated movies are... I love all of them. That, that's actually one of the few things I genuinely pre-order because I'm looking that forward to seeing it. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I get digital on a lot of things now, that's something I still like to have the physical copies of. I love the DC movies. Catwoman yeah. Hunted. Um, Catwoman Hunted. They cast Elizabeth Gillis, is she called, as Catwoman, and her voice for Catwoman is just a mwah, just kiss. Yeah, but well, it's like the uh, <laughs> the Killing Joke as well, where you obviously got um, Mark that's Hamill as the Joker and. Mm-hmm. Kevin what's Conroy. his name Conroy. Kevin Conroy as the as Batman and it was just it was like listening and watching the comic book like and his and I love the, the, the joke that's what I read when I read Joker comics that's the voice I hear is Mark yeah. Hamill's Joker that will always be for me that's yeah I like, I like, Heath Ledger's Joker is amazing everyone else everyone everyone's got their own versions of Joker which are incredible Controversial, when I read a comic but... book <laughs> oh yeah when I, when I read a comic with Cesar Romero he's faultless um you know but when I read a comic book, it is Mark Hamill's, you know, hello kitty, is Joker's back in town? You know, that kind of really sort of whenever I whenever anyone says to me do a Joker impression, it's always that version of the joke. It's always yeah. like Mark Hamill's like that kind of Joker. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's gotta voice. be. It's yeah. gotta be done. It's gotta be done. I'm not gonna attempt to do a Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Joker, did I imagine this? But are they making a sequel to to Joker? Yeah, Wackaday yeah. Phoenix is doing a sequel, yeah. There is a sequel coming, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I'd can't see, wait for, for some reason. Go, What's that tied into? I I completely had it in my head that I'd made that up, but no. The funny thing is, he he left Doctor Strange because he was originally cast as Doctor Strange, and he left that because he didn't want to be part of a big multi-film deal type thing. Which I thought was quite funny. Oh, that is a custom. Oh, <laughs> my custom, my custom uh, Joker. That film was an Joker awesome film. film. Yeah. That was a great, that was an awesome film. Didn't he, wasn't even, I'm going to put him back out on the shelf. Now that the sequel's just coming, film. he's come out of the box. He's going back on my shelf. The only DC figure I've got. But there we go. Um, but no, I, uh, yeah, I thought I imagined it for some reason. I thought it was in my head that they were doing a sequel to, to Joker. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that trailer, the only problem I do have, and, and I'm, a bit, I'm a big fan of his, so it's difficult for me to say this, but I feel that The Rock has over rocked black adam <laughs> that makes sense like i've seen so much stuff online about oh it's going to change the superhero game and the superhero film of all time and that kind of stuff and i'm like i've not seen anything yet that makes it my favorite one of all time no i'm really looking forward to shazam the scorpion king it's going to be a really good film. <laughs> <laughs> it's well dr fate and um Hawkman. Hawkman Both look obviously awesome. in that and they do look cool. Um, I'll give them that. They do look Just very glad cool. Pierce Brosnan is still getting work because he's a great actor. <laughs> glad that Pierce Brosnan is still picking up a gig. It's just yeah. no. I think he's brilliant. I think he's brilliant. You know and the curse of being a Bond. You know sometimes you know they don't. One of my favourite Bonds. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, I think I've got the best mug again today. I'm sticking with R2T2. R2T2. I like R2-T2, it. R2T2. Yeah. Like it. Um, but yeah. So that was the DC trailer drop um i'm looking forward to seeing the full length version of those trailers but there was a bit more movie news in the form oh it's not a movie but a bit more kind of teaser trailer news in the form of obi-wan kenobi's mm. official poster and official release date which is yes. of course 25th of may and after our discussion figured out why yep. it's on that date mm. took a while but i finally figured it out ryan's gonna be impressed <laughs> yeah. with figuring this out so on May the 4th, we were all expecting to drop on May the 4th because obviously May the 4th with you. However, yes. if we wait until that date that they put it as, that will be the official 40th anniversary of when we last, uh, when we first saw Obi-Wan Kenobi on our screens. It'll be the exact day. Oh, oh. so it's 40th anniversary to the day. Well done. Well, that's, the that's is, slow, good... slow claps don't work as well on a Zoom thing. Because loads of other <laughs> windows can't now open and start a big thunderous applause. So it's just that's you doing really, the slow claps. That's, really, that's really impressive. I, man. 
I haven't seen anybody else mention that though. So that's you that's heard it here first on the Geek Week. Yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the anniversary of a new hope to the day. So it would it makes sense why they're doing it that way. And obviously because um what's it uh, the the Marvel one will still be running. Moon Knight will still be running. Moon Knight. Yep. Yeah. And we're they're um, expecting that we're, we're expecting a crossover, aren't we? Not a crossover, but like a there's gonna be the Bad Batch season two is gonna launch at some point while Moon Knight's still running as well. So we're gonna have eventually two Star Wars series at once running. Wait, Bad Batch is coming that soon? Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. what I was like. I was like that. I was like, is it that, that quick? Yeah, it is yeah. very soon. It's, it's That's exciting. Month. Yeah. It is coming very soon. Um, oh, man, that's made yeah. my day a bit more... Oh, I thought I was going to have to wait longer for new Star Wars, but that's good. So well, saying I noticed way. that from the, the conversations on the internet and then upon closer inspection, there's a lot of talk about the lightsaber that he's holding not being his lightsaber. Have you heard that conversation online? Uh, no, I haven't heard about it. I did see the lightsaber and it's not his. No. So <laughs> they're saying that it looks a lot more like Anakin's lightsaber, mm-hmm. which Well, he still is... have, he will have it. Yeah, exactly. So we I thought that was a Luke, cool little detail. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that was a cool little detail to mm. include on the on the poster. Just it gives us kind of geeks like zoom in. Hmm. <laughs> Those boots are not, you know. But yeah, so hey, for that's, walking. that's cool. How how heavy do you think Vader's gonna 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 feature? I don't know. I'm you know, my, I hope he's got a good amount in it. Well, they've ca- they've brought Hayden back, and they're not they're not going to bring him back just for a cameo. Surely they've made such no. a big deal of the fact that he's in it with him. So I'm wondering whether it's going to be like the we're going to get some de aging tech done to both of them, and we're going to see some flashback scenes that we've never seen before, like new scenes, mm. because there is that comic book uh, Anakin and Obi Wan, which is you know set before Revenge of the Sith. So I wonder whether they're going to include yeah. some of that that bits in it. I think that's Sorry. what we're gonna get. I just, I just thought of a really funny like meme I seen online. <laughs> it's like from New Hope. You know where Obi Wan just like disappears and he's like <laughs> a pile of clothes. And it cuts <laughs> scenes and it shows him running down the corridor naked. <laughs> <laughs> and just, once you see it, you can't get it out of your head. It's ruined that scene. You know? you, like, Darth mean... Vader swings his lightsaber and then just <laughs> <I don't get laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> opposite of that box and so the thing that makes that scene even better has anyone seen the bit where someone's made what they call the missing scene the, the lightsaber mm. fight between and it's like yeah. hardcore lightsaber fighting yeah it's like much more in like with revenge of the sith and stuff like that it's yeah. an awesome scene like i actually love it so much i almost kind of in my it, it's for me it's head cannon yeah <laughs> it's canon. <kind> of... <laughs> yeah no I, I i completely agree i'm sticking to it now this is my commitment of the year like uh, is I'm I'm now I'm done with canon stuff now. Now I have my own head cannon. I'm just going to enjoy head stuff cannon. the way I want to enjoy it. Screw everyone else. Yeah, yeah. If you want to include this scene, it's included. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I, I I I I'm really excited for the Kenobi series. I'm like there's such I'm potential there. Such potential yeah. with the star is. And they've said quite openly. I think it was um, Ewan McGregor said that there was a lot of discussion about how there's. There's, there's a film that everyone wanted to make that fills in those gaps between the films. And, and this, this is it. This is them telling that story that so many people have wanted to, to tell. So I don't think it's just going to be kind of a story for the sake of a story, like, dare I say it, kind of the Book of Boba Fett was yeah. or is. I think this is really going to be kind of, a, by the time it concludes, I'm really hoping it kind of brings it to a natural... You know, when you get a jigsaw oh, piece yeah. and it fits really smoothly in between the two bits, of, and I really yeah. hope that it does that, that it kind of just bridges that gap. Because who but. who do you think is going to uh, cameo in this? Who do you, who would you like to see cameo in this? Owen I and Baru. The, I know it sounds the like Mandalorian. a weird thing to say, <laughs> but I kind of want to, I do actually want to see um, Owen and Baru because, you know, you had, uh, who was he? Um, the guy from Avatar, wasn't it, who played... Uh, Uncle Owen in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. And you know, if you get those two actors back, they're now the right age. Yeah, it'll yeah. be it's a bit like the Mon Mothma from the deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith, but when she got to Rogue One, she was the right age between yeah. Return of the Jedi actress and herself and <laughs> things. So it's kind of thing. I would I would quite like to say because you know there's got to be some more interaction there, I think. Be, you know, because they can't really other than Obi Wan giving them the kid at the end of Revenge of the Sith, there's not much. And then in A New Hope, he says about him being like the crazy old wizard and stuff like that. And like, when does he start calling himself Ben? You know, when did that start happening and things like that? So I kind of feel like the, I'd like to see the, the Owen and Baru. Yeah, 
I, I maybe like toddler Luke. I hope they don't buy into the the franchise too much and put things like Grogu in it and stuff and just you know what I mean. Just I hope that they stay really pure. <laughs> to the only one I would accept is Ahsoka, seeing Ahsoka in it somehow because obviously there's yeah, there's that think. massive tie-in with Vader Ahsoka and Ahsoka or Rebels cast because they are there actually at yeah. the I would... time and even in the Kenobi bit you see Luke running in the Kenobi, uh, Rebel series don't you yeah Things, the way I would love this to start is literally where Rebels left off I would love it if it started where he's burying Maul or burning Maul's body or something if it started there, that would be really good great show that would be great amazing. Show. literally yeah. it's just going to follow us around from Rebels we already know where he is Ezra's just left him so we don't have to have Ezra in this one but we know he's we know he's kicking about the galaxy and it's set in that time area now that's perfect. So Maul's just been killed. We don't. We could have maybe a quick cameo with, uh, what's he called? The played Maul. I know he'd be a corpse, but still, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see that. And you know, like, like honoring, honoring the you know the dead or whatever. You know, burying him. Or something. I wonder whether though they're gonna take it back a little bit, and Darth Maul mm. could be the in it the cameo that we're not expecting to happen because uh, if you haven't seen Rebels. You don't know the conclusion of that story, do you? you don't know well, that part. Be, so, to be fair, I'd repeat it though. Unless, unless you've seen Clone Wars, you don't know who Cad Bane is, but he's just been the major reveal in Boba or Ahsoka. This is true. This is true. I think um, I'd love to see Liam Neeson because I because obviously there's that there's that storyline of he was the first one to find a way to communicate through the Force as a Force ghost. Mm, so I would love to see yeah. him talking to you like like Yoda, Qui Gon, and Obi Wan sort of link somehow in some Force chat yeah that would be quite cool to see i think i think there's a good <laughs> chance chat. sorry if that's no, not app, i couldn't think of the word like a force chat if that's not an app by the end of the year <laughs> then that's a wasted potential force chat and it's just a star I, wars whatsapp service i think that there's a potential that there's potential for yoda to show up in it obviously um liam neeson would be a really good shout be even a if really it's just good a voice, shout. like a voice thing i could be just a voiceover be perfect yeah. Where whereabouts does um oh, what was the the apprentice game? What was it called? Force Awakens. Fallen Order. Fallen Order. No. Force Awakens. No, not Force Awakens. That's a film. Fallen Order. Yeah, they order. No, Force Unleashed. Oh, Force, Force Unleashed. Unleashed is not canon anymore. Yeah. Force Unleashed. Mate, we're talk- we're head- is it well they've just totally written it off. <laughs> yeah. Is it because they got the same doesn't he do the voice of Maul in Yeah. Sandwich. Oh. Yeah, no. Disney cancelled everything that wasn't theirs, basically, when they bought it, <laughs> including Shadows of the Empire, which is I'm yeah. still really upset about. So let's not talk about because oh. <laughs> it would have just been cool to see to see Star Killer kind of like brought into the mix. But never mind, he's not canon anymore. But they are making it would be the right area. time. It would be the right time zone. It would be the right time area to include yeah. him. But he's not canon. I don't. But think... haven't they just announced a Black Series figure? No. Even still, they just call oh. it gaming greats. Figures are figures, aren't they? Figures don't mean anything. We just had Jax the Rabbit. <laughs> like, Mate, I would not put it, um, I would not put them past it, including him in the next season of Mandalorian or something. I would literally I could see them making a realistic rabbit. I could see them doing because yeah. it would yeah, get yeah. a pop. It would get a pop. They got but, um, my my big thing for this series that I'm hoping is that it's gonna launch. Obviously, I think BK might come back. Like Curse, then I think he might come back. Because I think this could be the series that might serve as the start for Doctor Afra, because it's the right yeah. time zone. Okay, that would work yeah, that out. Would, work. would line up nicely. And that she did have adventures with Obi Wan and Darth Vader, and it could open up for her own series to then feature you and McGregor and um, Hayden going forward as Darth Vader. Mm. I wonder whether there will be any, whether there will be any cameos, or whether they'll just keep it completely pure mm. to the. Obi Wan Kenobi, this is his story. Like we don't need to have people showing up because before we we we're obviously going to go on to the Book of Boba Fett a little bit later, but it became so muddied with kind of who was the cameo and was this their episode? Was it this person's episode? You know, do they need to do that in every single show that they do? And I'd be happy for just I'd be happy with just a good character piece about Obi Wan. Yeah, I would. Love I, I wonder. I would love that, but you know, it's Disney and it's a franchise, and they want to keep it going. So, like I, well, say, I just hope he says hello there. That's that's all <laughs> I want. If he'll say that, he's got that. to say it at some point. And like you say, give us the answer as to why he's called Ben Kenobi. 
I hope it's like really underwhelming. Like he falls over in one episode and then just starts referring to himself as Ben. <laughs> That's no idea. Like I've never had droids. What's your name? Yeah. Uh, ben. <laughs> no, it's, and that's just a really rubbishly, poorly wrote, written uh, like story. We could see, see we could see, over. sorry, we could see some Inquisitors in this, technically. They asked, they are about at this, this time period. There we go. Yeah, because we've only seen five of the, no, six of them across games and TV shows. Yes. Because you've got the, the two from Fallen Order, Seven, three, yeah. three in, no, seventh, four in Rebels. Seventh sister, second sister, the fifth brother, the Grand Inquisitor. That's four. That's then you Rebels. add the, then you add one. You had one in the Jedi Fallen Order because you had that big guy, didn't they? He was one of them. That's five. Uh, well, and the and Chris, you know, Chris is a uh, former apprentice. Seven, six. Yeah, and six. there's like, isn't there like ten or something? Probably. <laughs> I think I read somewhere. So yeah, there's plenty of room for some others. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that'd be quite cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd like to see Ahsoka and and Anakin though. I'd like to see a bit more of that relationship because obviously in in Rebels he was already suited up, wasn't he? When they did that temple fight, and there was the whole the the snow scene with the mm. the trooper oh, helmets so and stuff. Good. And it would just be really nice to see. Just because I don't think he's going to be, there's going to be naturally, there's going to be a transition period, isn't there, between him being like potato Anakin, where he's obviously just kind of just come off of the barbecue. Potato Anakin. Like, <laughs> he is that potato Anakin, as he's just come out of the fire. He's yeah. just come straight out of the fire. Well, I, I want to see like that in black potato. series writing on the new box. <laughs> <laughs> potato Anakin. Jacket, jacket potato Anakin. No, no he is. Like, throwing just... straight in the. I literally just picture uh, Robot Chicken whenever I hear, like, whenever I think of Darth Vader and Anakinism, I just picture Robot Chicken, and I can just see, like, like the first day in the suit, just, like, in the program, like, oh, no, no, wrong button. But no. it would be cool to see, <laughs> it'd be cool to see some kind of, almost where he's struggling with his own dark side. Yeah, Dark side, is there a way of saying that? But the dark side in him, and there's something with Ahsoka that leads nicely into what we saw in Rebels. And... Oh, they could do the Padme grave thing from the comics. They could do it. Oh, that'd be so amazing. So in the comics, there's a massive cool. thing about Padme's grave. There's like a, he makes a shrine to her, basically. He buries her in like a mausoleum-y thing with like her right. like carving on it. It's so mental. And there's like that whole thing in there with the Darth Vader VR things based on all that. They could, oh, that could be amazing. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be very that, good. That that would be his internal torment that he never got to save Padme, but he made all them sacrifices. He went to the dark side and it didn't actually save his wife. No, I'd like to see a transition as well because naturally, when the Darth Vader came out, it was a very scary, and it still is. But in comparison to people like Darth Maul and you know the the characters we got much later on, he looks very kind of dated in, you know, where we've got buttons here and stuff, but he's, you look at him in Rogue One, he's still got that, that presence. It'd be cool for me. It'd be cool to see some kind of transition where you see him with like the Terminator legs and the kind of Terminator arm. And just so that he's not straight into the suit and you know, mm. that there's some kind of transition, if that makes sense. Like we might that see the be Emperor cool. in this series. Hmm. I was just thinking it would be cool would, if, if Vader would make was... sense. He's always about. Mm. <laughs> it's just just the... oh, <laughs> any opportunity. Was... <laughs> well, you know, Force <laughs> Awakens, Last Jedi. He was there. We just didn't yeah. see him. He's always yeah. about. Yeah, he's somewhere. He's Book of Boba Fett. He was there. <laughs> yeah. Just look in the background, like. But, but yeah, no, that'd be Hello. cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is my episode. <laughs> hey, Boba, Boba, tell, tell them you have unlimited power. Honestly, they'll love it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> it's just every every scene yeah. when they're in the the Jabba's palace, he was sat in the throne. And they yeah. just come on, pan round. <laughs> it's just yeah. they don't stop there. Tell, it, tell <laughs> him to do it. <laughs> hey, Boba, execute orders <laughs> twenty two. He's he's watched back the entire series. They cut my bars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Never mind. You've been chucked off a cliff. I have. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> Last name, my own bloody Death Star. Two, twice, <laughs> twice that bloody happened. <laughs> that was done. 
<laughs> you killed Jacob. <laughs> the oh. it cost to make a death star on two of the bloody things. <laughs> You must smell like really really bacon. <laughs> Try to plan it for the Star Destroyers. That didn't even bloody work. <laughs> Some Aladdin girl comes up with a sad story and a lightsaber. Gone again, I am. <laughs> bloody all the Jedi. All the luck in the world, I say. Oh, she broke with me. I'm just, can, I'm just thinking we, about him moaning about his financial. Anyway, I'm taking over the geek wing now. <laughs> can we see a scene where he's designing, where he's, he's doing that whole thing where he's like, if oh. anything should happen to me, put me in a gold robe and call me Snoke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when do we get that scene? Like, I want a fancy gold robe this time. But like, just, make sure, like, half, okay. just make sure like half my face is caved in for no reason or explanation. Oh. Just half of it. Just. No, 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 it just, you'll just mess with them. <laughs> and make me a rainbow tall for no reason. You have to stare at my balls while I'm talking to it. Yeah. No, it's, a whole, it's a whole series a ring about him. Question. It's a whole series about the Emperor just being so financially crippled that he's yeah. got to kind of change his identity and pretend to be somebody else. He's, like, he's on the run. Hello, like, my oh, name oh, is right James oh. Emperson, and I don't want to build a Death Star, but... It's a death star. You're not, you're not the person that owes us like five hundred million pounds. That's the emperor. No, I, I, my... I'm James Emperor's son. You my head's caved in. Look at my diet. The it's just like a, okay. Yeah. No. There's no yeah. power in the force bigger than oh. my finance. You ruined me there. I, I literally just see. <laughs> That's I don't know, mate. <laughs> It's that robot chicken voice, isn't it? it just, every is, time you think of the Emperor, is. you hear that voice. That's, that is all I can think of with the Emperor. Now, every time I do something now, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. And every it's time I ele- something it's in, it's like, unlimited power. It's the elevator bit. Where you, you must have seen that skit where he kind of goes to the elevator and then he doesn't want to get in and he's going up the escalator. Yep. Oh, go oh, fuck my yourself. Lord. Go fuck yourself. Fuck <laughs> you. Don't, don't you. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, it's the ele- it's the one in the elevator with all the um, can calamari people. He's like, I don't want to smell like a fillet of fish, thank you. <laughs> it's so good, it's so oh. funny. Oh, no. No, I haven't laughed like that for ages. That was that me. That ruined me. Absolutely ruined me. Just... Oh, look at Boba Fett. I just... <laughs> that's that's a good transition. Let's talk about that episode. Let's talk about that episode because it's. Who does seven episodes? I mean, come on, it's not even even number. <laughs> I am. Um, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. There was nothing. Book of Boba Fett was good, but by the end of it, I was like, "Why did we need this?" Other than for the Mando scene, that was it. It's yeah. It just I'm, didn't grip me at all. The ending. No. To be fair, we didn't it, need Mandalorian, but we it was still awesome. <laughs> no, no, but the Book of Boba Fett set up the Mandalorian. It's kind of bridged the gap between series yeah. two ending and series three starting, but like. Even even the kind of like it was it was really cool. And as a Star Wars fan, it was enjoyable to watch and whatnot. But even the bit at the end where it was kind of like, who's going to run the ton- town now? And they're all kind of in a circle and tossing apples between each other. It's kind of like, you know, there's no point to this story anymore. Like we're all just here. And then it's but then it cuts away to do 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 night and <laughs> yeah. I just and and it I, I like the. Yeah, I know you were because I didn't want it to leave on a big cliffhanger or anything, but it just felt like there wasn't a point. And that's 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 what got me is I was kind of like, what what have you what story have you told that we needed to know? Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not given uh, the, the earlier episodes where it's given us the flashback to the the um, Sarlacc pit and the, the Tuscan Raiders and stuff. I absolutely love that because I was like, this is where Boba's been between obviously where we saw him in the movies to where he popped up in the Mandalorian. But then once they'd kind of caught up to date with where they were, everything after that was kind of like, did, did we need this as a story? Like this, it doesn't add anything to the universe for me, but that's just my opinion. I, I enjoyed it and I will rewatch it, but I just think it was a bit too Mando heavy and mm. like, even the Rancor, yeah. riding the Rancor. I was so looking forward to that. And when it kind of came out, apart from the, the homage to kind of classic monster movies with the hands over the top and the roar in the distance and it was very Cloverfield, wasn't it? But um, well, and, and Kong, even the you know. even the King Kong element of hanging off of the the top of the building, I I kind of enjoyed all that. But I'd been looking forward to seeing him ride it so much 
and they even threw Mando on it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> there it is. I'm jumping on that saddle because I'm the Mandalorian. And it was like, no, at least just leave that for Boba. Like, I don't know. There's my little rant. What do you guys make of it? <laughs> you sound so defeated. I just, the more I talk about it, the more I realise I'm disappointed with where it ended. But yeah, I, I was expecting it to end a little bit more cliffhangery or <clears> something. <throat> it just didn't. Yeah. They felt like we would just watch that story for the sake of watching it, just to find out what happened to Mandalorian. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Boba's payoff wasn't there. There was no payoff for Boba Fett. No. He, st- he basically stood for that town, and now they all respect him, and that's it. <laughs> and that's not... The, the sad thing is, is that's not who Boba Fett is. No. And no. I know he's talking about, oh, we've got to retire, but he's not. He's not. Back in the day, he was this silent bounty hunter that was just kick-ass that kind of became a cult favorite he wasn't like we didn't need his story to be where it was if that makes sense it's mm-hmm. just kind of and I, I i'm gonna get strung up for saying this but i didn't care about the mandalorian in this because i was like you know what whatever it is that wherever your story is going to go we're going to be shown that in episode three like we didn't need all of those scenes with the dark saber and the armorer and we didn't even need the scenes with Grogu and Luke, and you know we didn't we didn't need those as part of the Boba Fett book of Boba Fett because they didn't add anything to his story. But I don't know. Come at me if I'm if I'm wrong, but <laughs> it's just I enjoyed seeing all the bridging and the gap stuff. I, I did enjoy seeing like Ahsoka and Luke together. Stuff like that was amazing to see. But <clears throat> as the book of Boba Fett. I don't think Bo, like I say, I don't think Boba Fett's story had any form of payoff at all. No, the, and I don't I care what the, happens to him next. As sad as that sounds, like if that's his, if yeah. that's his sunset scene, I don't care. No, <laughs> that, that the, was, the biggest, that was the biggest thing for me as a series as a whole was the Sarlacc pit bits, mm. the getting the armor back and all that kind of stuff when he was looking in the Sarlacc pit and that. The, the whole Tuscan Raider thing was fantastic to see this, this side of those that we had never seen before. And it made it a real kind of dances with wolves esque kind of like feel and everything. And the Cad Bane tie in and the kind of the full circle with Cad Bane and that, that last showdown where he kind of pulled back on what he had learned from the Tuscan Raiders to defeat this guy that had seen him grow up and you know, was one of the best bounty hunters out there. Let's just say that. So for him to kind of win it and stuff, that that to me was brilliant. But the rest of it was all kind of just filler, in my opinion. Um, for... <laughs> it's just, Ryan is just deadly quiet. The one thing I enjoyed seeing about the about this episode, the one thing that did make me laugh was the fact that the big the big bad monster was calmed by Krogu. I thought that was hilarious, and then he snuggled into it. Yeah. There was plenty yeah. of cutesy scenes with Grogu, but that's not what I wanted from that episode. It was no. like, I didn't need that bit. I didn't need Mando to turn up a bit. I like Grogu to turn up at that point. It all yeah. seemed very Mando's our new character. We're pushing Mando, and it's you need to know what happens to Mando for season three. And that's it. Yeah. Boba Fett was pushed to the side. Yeah. In favor of all the characters. And can we just address as well, what was the weird dance movie he did where he kind of put his arm out to the side and he put his leg up and he like shot stuff out? Like there was a real kind of like, <laughs> it was like a, like, I know he did that in Mandalorian, but it just seemed really like theatrical in this. Yeah. I, I did, I, I must admit actually, I did enjoy the Mando and Boba Fett stand up where they the kind of flew yeah, up. That cool. and, yeah, the that was Cassidy, cool. Yeah, that was cool. Sundance Kid, mate. Yeah. Mm. There was a lot of, there was a lot of cool, don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the episode f- for what, what it, it was. was. Like it's, I'm not slating it in that respect. I just, I didn't need it. Like the, it wasn't, like the, the last episode with Cad Bane coming in, like I was left on a real, I don't want to say cliffhanger because I know you hate that, Ryan, but. It's not that I was left on a cliffhanger, but there was so much satisfaction in the regards of look, we've seen Luke and Ahsoka together. We we know I where Grogu is. Like... I don't. <laughs> just, I, I don't. I don't mind cliffhangers in the middle of watching a series. <clears throat> I just don't think you always have to end on a cliffhanger at the end of a series. That's my no. thing. I like cliffhangers. Cliffhangers are great. Occasionally they work really well. It's lovely, you know, for the build up for that next thing or whatever. But it's just this obsession of putting them on absolutely anything no. that's getting a sequel. In. I just. I'm a bit bored of just everything. I just wanted a story to conclude and go, awesome, it's done. <laughs> it's finished. No, <laughs> welcome to 2022, mate. It's not going to happen. Um, but I think that's a really good point because the 
the mid credit scene in Book of Boba Fett, I didn't care about. <laughs> like, I love the character, but I just assumed that he wasn't dead anyway. I was he, just got kind of, he got shot in the arm. He got shot in the arm. He didn't die. No, well, we, I thought we, he was dead because see they made a him. point of him being dead. They made, they made it sound like he was dead when the Weequay turned up. Um, yeah. He sort of made it turn out. So I thought he was dead. And then I was actually really happy about the mid credit scene because I was like, oh, he's not dead. Yeah. I was, see, I, I just, I was watching it very much as in he's not, but. <laughs> It was the whole kind of like, oh, and here's the, I don't know what his official name is, but the mod guy that mm. he turns around and kind of Dr. boops mod. up his little, yeah. And it's just kind of like, oh, so you're hinting that obviously he's in the tank, so he's going to be healed, but he's also going to have this mod. So he's probably going to get a spin off series or be a relevant part of something in the future. But I was just kind of, I didn't need that. And for the first time, I was like, if you hadn't included that scene, I wouldn't have even been angry. No. I didn't, but, I don't, I didn't. Like, I, like I say, I didn't fear for that character's life anyway. I don't really care no. about that character anyway. It's cool. It's a cool character, but I don't care about him. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. It's not like something I need to know about. And that whole scene was very lackluster. Yeah, but it, it was even as well. Like <clears throat> I loved the whole. We all knew that all the the, the territories or whatever they were called were mm. all going to turn on him. We kind yeah. of all knew that was going to happen. And cinematically, I loved how they did that, where we saw. They're all they set up oh, they everybody, turn, everybody. yeah. Everyone being positioned in the places and and then uh, obviously the guards as well. We saw <laughs> the guard. Do you see Yoda just fall down behind me? <laughs> Yoda and Darth Vader literally just took a dive. <laughs> it was just <laughs> as in shut up. But um, but yeah, we saw it all set up and everything, which was really cool. And then the way they all <clears> turned on them, I thought that was brilliant, and it had a real kind of Western vibe to it, and it was just really cool to watch. But then it was even like BK, like, you know, you saw him taken down and then in the next scene, he literally comes walking around with them all hanging off him. And it's like, no, you know what? Kill him off. Like, do what you did. Oh. Like, not not kill him off. Not, not, <laughs> I, I didn't want him to die. But what I'm saying is that they showed us that scene. It's like I, I half expected like the guards, uh, what are they called? The Gamorian guards. guards. Yeah. To sort of turn up with a black eye, just be like, ah, oh, like, you know, like a bit of a bit of dust on their shoulder, and like, you know, they would turn up again because it, it almost felt like nothing was to be fair, definitive, did, nothing was final. I did genuinely, I did for the first time, I did actually shout at the TV during that episode because I did genuinely thought they were, they were about to kill off Black Kirsten, and I was about to get very upset. I was like, mm. don't kill the Wookiee. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> no, my son was the, the same. one character I cared about in the whole thing was that stupid Wookiee. My son was the same. He was like, no. I thought, I've, already, well, I've already watched this. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> no, and he was like, okay. oh, oh, come on. But it, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, so there was oh, a lot of elements. We, there was a we, lot of good elements. Can we talk about the very unnecessary twirl, please? Which one? So the mod. we've got the scene the mod, with the yeah. mods holding up. Oh, right. yeah, and, yeah, yeah, did, yeah. and he's already facing forwards with his gun <gasps> aiming out. And for no reason at all, he does the wee, the little twirl. And yeah. then, like, no, no, it was cool. That was, it was for another reason than I'm gonna look cool. Um, yeah, Ryan, you're you're deceptively quiet throughout this. What come on, throw it at us. I'm just really debating whether I have the energy to say my <laughs> bit on it because come on, the problem so here's one of my big issues in life is that I'm a quite a positive person in life, which is um quite one of those things where uh. A lot of the rants I go on are one for more from a comical nature, but genuinely, when things do annoy me, they annoy me. And they're normally yeah. about things about people not enjoying things. That's normally what my rants are centered around. Um, but like trying to defend something that you really enjoy, I really enjoyed Book of Boba Fett from start to finish. And <laughs> but the thing is. I don't know if I've got the energy to ward off everyone going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, because I just enjoyed it. I can't really explain it other than more than that. Like, the things I enjoyed about it, like, I was actually, ha a lot of things people are moaning about, I'm happy that they did them the way they did. Uh, the, you know, my one, if I had one criticism for the series, is that they had that Mando episode where Boba, they, they, they should have cut some of the footage of Boba in other episodes, maybe in with those footage, those other story so it wasn't just a mando episode it should have been mando cut back to two things happening at once still um yeah. you know so a bit like what the second one was even though he only has like an un a silent cameo at least it does then cut back to the stuff that is going on in that story so i could appreciate that but however 
because we enjoyed it so much, I didn't care. Like, and this is the thing, everyone's saying about, uh, do we need that? But we didn't need a Mandalorian series. We didn't know about this character or care about this character at all. These are just completely things made up. We didn't need those stories at all. We didn't need Bad Batch. We didn't need Clone Wars, really. We didn't need Rebels. We didn't, we've not needed any Star Wars, really. So, no. yeah, you know, when people say that, but then the other thing is, people go, like, about Boba Fett. Well, I said, okay. People say, oh, it's not what Boba Fett is. But Boba Fett's what everyone, different iterations make it. Different comic books go down very different routes of Boba Fett. Very different. Some of them go off really, like, polar opposites. Some of them he's the good guy. Some of them he's the bad guy. You know, it's just, it's a big thing with him. And, like, this series is basically coming, I guess, like a bounty hunter. He's been doing it for so many years. He's basically faced as close as he can to death. He's finally found somewhere he belongs. And he's trying to hold on to that bit of humanity and settle down and try and have, can a, can a bounty hunter have a, a sense of purpose and a good life? And... Yeah, you know, that's the thing that's called into question. The one time he's trying to do something for positive, that it's not for someone else and for him, for himself and to make a, a home and to take somewhere that he loves and turn it from a scum, the, the hive of scum and villainy and to make it a place that's prosperous and for all. And, you know, I quite like that little journey he's gone. I like the fact that he's not the Boba Fett that I would want to see in Empire or Return of the Jedi, you know. I like the fact at the end he was like, you know, doesn't want to be the killer, but he has to be the killer. And, you know, and now he's going to have to try and adapt to this life of, you know, that he finally got what he wants at the end of the episode. And he's now, it's, it's alien to him. You know, everyone's nodding. Everyone actually does respect him and everyone's giving him fruit on the street and stuff like that. And now he's not sure if he can do it. And so, you know, will they, you know, will they be able to actually govern a whole town? He's not, he's going to basically be the mayor of everything. See, I, w- I would agree with you if they hadn't included the little bit of dialogue where they were basically saying, well, we've done this, but let's get back. Like, we, we can't stay doing this. Like, let's get back to what. And it kind of just said to me that they've done this, but then they're just going to go back to what we used to see them do. And that was that was what ruined it of me is that it would have been nice if there was a little bit of dialogue sort of going like, you know what? I'm hanging my boots up. Like, I'm done. Like, this is this is me. But it wasn't. It was left very much as but in. I think he's got to have his boots still on to run it, though. No, I don't know because he's respected there's now. There's going to be other threats. Yeah, but there's going to be other threats coming. You know, he's now got to protect it. So now he's he's fought for it, but now he's got to protect it. He's got to maintain yeah. it. So the rumors, yeah. the rumors that are coming for season two, because they are going to make season two, has been confirmed. Um, yeah. And the rumors are that we might see Samuel Jackson reprise as Mace Windu, with the hand missing and all that kind of stuff as a as a grizzled old Jedi. And gets wound up with funny. Boba, and gets wound up with Boba Fett, and obviously because of Boba Fett, obviously knew, knows that he killed his father. There was that whole thing in Clone Wars. There was like a bad, like Boba Fett wanted to kill all the Jedi, basically, didn't he, to revenge his mm. father? Now that Quite he's graphic, changed who he is, like, cut his head off, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Now that, but now that he's changed into this new, ver- like new uh, kind of Boba Fett, I would like to see what happens when them two characters meet now. Yeah, they're just gonna make like a buddy eighties cool. cop <laughs> series. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> Mace, <with> these... <laughs> Mace Windu and and Boba Fett. Isley yes. Hills Cop Three. It is with, just, Judd, but, with Jedi basically, Judge Reinhold. Basically, just Dukes to Hazard in it with land speeders, like you know the, the mid air well, Jedi better and... grow some wings or hope for it. You know, you know people, you know, yeah. people said for years they would like to see what because like. We didn't really see a definitive death of Mace Windu. He just got electrocuted and sent out of the window. But how many times did Anakin fall out of one of them stupid cars and survive? You know what I mean? Oh, I know, yeah. So I mean, there's an, he's a, he's, and he's one. He's meant to be one of the top Jedi of the Council, and you're telling me he can't he can't survive that? Come on. Well, I, I actually back in the day when Renzo Sith came out, I wrote a fan fiction where Kit Fisto survived <laughs> because he only gets us. Well, one, he actually lasts longer than the other two because he actually blocks mm-hmm. a few moves before he gets it. He only gets a slash across the chest. So I had it so that he had like one of his um, tendrils missing and stuff like that. He had like a, just like a metal chain type thing dangling down from it and like blinding one eye and stuff. But yeah. See, so who knows? Oh, I love, I love Kit I Fisto, love, but Clone Wars, Kit Clone, Wars, Clone Wars ruined Kit Fisto for that Jedi. stupid accent. Yeah. He did really? not need, he did not need the Jamaican accent. Come on. I never, it never, like in all the books and things that they wrote, like I never once heard his voice in my head with that accent. And then, Clone Wars just gave him that stereotypical because he had dreads, he had to have that voice. And it's just yeah. so stereotypical. I thought I, it was, it. I actually quite liked the voice for that. <laughs> I thought it was better than the one they used in the Chichoski um, mm. series where they just did with standard smooth American. 
<laughs> he is our best pilot, you know. And it's like, I was like, oh, that's what he sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And then when, when they did it in the Clone Wars, I actually thought, because I, I mean, I love Phil Lamar anyway. I think he's a fantastic, yeah. he's one of my favorite voice actors. And I actually, I quite liked that. You know, because <laughs> I would have liked was, him to have like different had more of an alien voice. Wars. But you know, it's like no one complained when Alien Secure had a French accent. I mean, who saw that coming? <laughs> yeah, but it works. Yeah. You know, the really having French accents is cool, you know. I like having different accents and styles. It's boring otherwise. <laughs> I would have liked him to have had more of an alien accent, like not that you couldn't pin on anything particular, but it was I like its own. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, it was just, but you know what I mean? Just something a bit different because you take a, a, a regional accent straight away, you kind of go, well, well, that's just French, that's just Jamaican or whatever. It's, it would have been cool if it was something that you couldn't quite place. Unthinkable. Yeah, a yeah. bit like Robert Downey Jr.'s right. Welsh accent in Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> is it Welsh? What was that? Is it? Like, is it Welsh? Is it, Scottish? Does it belong anywhere? Is it? Is, is, it, it, is it just? Is he drunk? Like, That's actually a film I've genuinely. I'd seen enough of the trailer. I'd refused to watch or something. I was just like, I'm not going to watch that. Mate, and then John, I read the reviews and I thought, thank God I didn't watch that. John Cena voicing a polar bear. It's worth watching it just for. That. To be fair, I just finished watching it with my kids this weekend mm. and. It's awful, but I know we're going to end up watching it again. Like it's one of them ones where there was enough little bits, but Nick, yeah, <laughs> but no. So yeah, no. I think going back to Boba Fett, I I do agree with you. I, I completely agree with you, but I do disagree with you at the same time. Like I just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, there, I just felt that there was something missing. I just, I, I really enjoyed it for what it was. I, I loved every single episode. I, I was there as soon as it, we all were, weren't we? We were all there as soon as that episode came out. We watched it, we caught up. It really kind of peaked. And I just feel like there was something that we should have got. The, and I don't know what that is, but I just feel that there was something missing in that, that at the end of it, in, in that end, final episode. Just And I can't put my finger what it, on what it is. But it's felt it's left me kind of going, oh, I've, I've missed something. Or I feel, you know, when you fall asleep in a film <laughs> for like five minutes and then you get to the end of the film and you're like, did I miss something really key? And then you watch it on DVD release. And you go, oh, my God, that, that makes so much sense. I fell asleep in that bit where so and so died or so and so. And that's how I feel with this is I'm like, did I miss something? Is there something that I've missed? But yeah, but that's just my personal opinion. And it's, you know. I, yeah, I mean, after after this, I probably won't say much more about it because the problem is, as you go online, you know, outside of this safe space we've got in this video chat, the internet's a horrible place. And if I say that I like something that people don't like, I'll be called a Disney fanatic or did you uh, fire to you're not a real Star Wars fan or something. Did like you that, did know. you like Farmer Thanos as well? Like just out of curiosity, <laughs> did you did you like that that Thanos got got that arc that he just kind of retired and became a farmer? Like yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Because what else would you do? It's, <laughs> but I don't get that. That's a natural conclusion. I don't get what. Why is that so funny? I knew that's what you were going to say. That's why I set it up. Because yeah, I but knew what else was he going to yes. do? He doesn't want to rule the universe. Join he an amateur, to make... amateur Jamax group or something. Like, come on. <laughs> just... Yeah, but that's farm, what mate. people so do when they retire. It, well, when I retire, I'm not going to farm. I will. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to growing stuff. But like, oh, like just... but what did you expect him to? The problem is because it's a Marvel film. What you expect him to do is go. Oh no, no, I've done that. I'm going to go conquer the fish people. Like, you know, why can't the guy just go? Right, I've just worked my ass off. I've wiped a half universe. I've killed my own daughter. My arm is now completely fucked. Everything I've done, everything I want to do in life. So now I'm just going to live a peaceful existence. Watch the sunrise. Tend to my crops. So he's growing stuff that he can eat and become self-sustaining. He's just <laughs> peacefully living out his existence. <laughs> why is that so weird? <laughs> Oh, it's what you guys are laughing about. <laughs> it's just the way that I want to take that bit of it. I'm going to take that bit of audio and put it over the top of that clip. That's why I'm laughing. That is laughing what about. You why, why? Avengers, Avengers Endgame. I'm going to take that bit of clip and just put your voice over the top. He's people he's not like crops. that. Then. He's self-sufficient. <laughs> what else is he going to do? They're just him there. Oh, doing... cares about like, self-sustaining. That... I love it. <laughs> No. Thing, though, it's that people don't like that bit. No, it's just something that at the time there was a lot of controversy <laughs> about because people were like, why is he a farmer? Also, like, he has to be self-sustaining. He's not going to pop to Asda's and get food, <laughs> is he? He just wiped out half just... the universe. Hang on, are you Thanos? No, <laughs> no, mate. No. <laughs> get that all the time. Get that... Oh, this, this is my, my brother. brother. With a tiny <laughs> little brother. trolley in his big hands like, 
Can you tell me where the meat section is, please? <laughs> Browse in the magazines. <laughs> hey, it's me, uh, James Emerson. Remember me? Uh, this is my brother, <laughs> Timmy Anos. You know, Timmy Anos <laughs> and uh, John Ambrose. You know, if we're ever alone, he's going to help me build a new Death Star. I mean, uh, I mean not a Death Star. <laughs> not a Death Star, a farm. <laughs> oh, dear. dear. Death Farm. Just... <laughs> a farm that sounds star. like. <laughs> farm stars that's like a bad 80s group um <laughs> cool right listen before we do finish up let's talk black series because there were some figures there were some black series reveals on the internet so Ash, you are our number one special black series guy why don't you hit us with that <laughs> so, i was looking there was, I was the emperor <laughs> I was lucky enough to be in the toxic environment that is a Hasbro live stream, and uh, it was oh. a horror of fun in there. Uh, yeah, Black Series Archive was the uh, the first up that they announced, and they're giving us the New Hope version of C-3PO, uh, Return of the Jedi Lando Calrissian in, as a skiff guard, which we didn't get that long ago, so I don't know why he's being released so soon. The, em- yeah. the um, Empire Strikes Back Dengar, to be fair, happy about that. I, I never got a Dengar, so I'm happy to get, to get one for cheap. Uh, an Emperor Palpatine, but it's not mm-hmm. the new version of Palpatine with the fancy hands and new face. It's the old Palpatine that nobody wants. <laughs> but I will one thing I will say about this wave because I got out of Black Series a while back, mm. and the reason I got out of Black Series is because characters like C three PO, the Emperor, were so highly priced and so hard to get hold of that as a completionist, I was kind of like, I can't. It wasn't yeah. the only reason, but it, it. I was looking at my collection. I was like, I need an Emperor. I'm not paying that money that people are asking for. And I, I need a, an official kind of C3. Yeah, if you PO, can't but... get the main characters. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's kind of, what's the point in having that section of my collection? And if I'm going to take that section out, then what's the point in having this section? So if I was still collecting, this would be a wave for me that I'd be like, this is brilliant. You're ticking so many boxes. Um, but yeah, but I just, I don't know why people complained about it. It's if you need the figures, they're there and they're at retail. Yeah. If you don't need them, <clears throat> guess what? Don't, don't buy, buy them. them. To be fair, archive line has always been one of them ones where it's either hit, it's either you know people are happy or people are sad. <laughs> There's no middle ground with the Star Wars fans. You know that. Jake's upset. He's gone. Jake's gone. He's retired. <laughs> Jake's retired. <laughs> oh, another investor gone. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, it was that that the, the whole Black Series archive thing. I don't mind it to be fair because it does like like James said. It helps get characters that you can't normally afford to get. Let, let, let's oh. be honest. Yeah, I mean, I'd love it for like the, the Da Vinci sketch if they released um, Revan again for like the mass market or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, or, or Malak or, you know, some of the ones that are really hard to get like figure wise. I wouldn't mind them doing an archive of that or even just some of the ones that are like the best molds of some, mm-hmm. you know, just to get that more access, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Where's Jacob Ruddy? Did he even say anything? He just walked off. Yes. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you're like, no, it's a. There's more silence from Jake than me in that Boba Fett conversation to start with. So uh, I'll just do his bit. Hello and welcome to the Geek Week in Review. My name is Jacob's Toys. With me is Super Sorrel. <laughs> Let's do a five minute toy review. <laughs> Are you saying the mick out of me? We, I heard we all doing your bit. We, we were just doing your listen, bit. Listen, I wasn't even gone. I could hear everything you're saying. I was on the <laughs> other side of my room. Don't tell him to make up my five minute toy review, Sorrel. <laughs> Sorrel. Also, you know, you're recording this. Oh, we know sh- you can see what we're saying because <laughs> <laughs> you can watch it. Um, you can repeat it as much as you want. I was no, doing my, sorry. I was doing my version. Listen, of you, if you really need intro. to know, I needed the toilet, so I went for a wee. All right. <laughs> Hear that, listeners on the podcast? We're only human. Hey, we do have to anyone, go to sometimes. Anyone listening on a podcast with a big cup of coffee and I needed the toilet. <laughs> but I tried. I tried to go really like inconspicuously, but then you guys no. just called me out on it. Well, so, here is R two T two, and this is R two P two. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, yeah, so archive line was the thing. Uh, yeah. Next up, next up was the fun one. Oh, this was the fun one. The gaming great series, always a barrel of fun. GameStop exclusive, and I'm not sure if you heard, but uh, GameStop basically cancelled loads of orders of people's mm. Sif Knight brother. Yeah, so on, on, well. on, yeah, they like cancelled thousands yeah. of orders, and on the back just, of that, just to, just to reward, the <laughs> and on the back of that, they're basically now releasing the Knight Brother Archer in from <laughs> GameStop exclusive again. <laughs> I did not understand the logic of that. It was kind of like here's two versions of these characters from the computer game, 
the the brother and the archer like the, the you know two of them that you would you would essentially army build as well if you were yeah. that way inclined that you could buy multiple of and create a really cool Calcaster setup we're going to cancel that one and we're going to give you this one as well like so have they, have they cancelled the figure or no, because people over here in the UK have got it, haven't they? Yeah. Some people here have picked it up. GameStop basically couldn't... F- I, I, I think the idea is a bit like what Zavi does sometimes. I think they overshot the orders. I don't think GameStop could fulfil the orders, basically. I no, think that's okay. what basically happened. Because uh, loads of, some people got them, but loads of orders got cancelled. So so I think it was a and case of them up. Just out of the blue as well, people sharing screenshots yeah. of, has anyone else had this? Like, what's going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which, is, which is a shame. Which is a shame, but and ironically, it's one that I had in on order, and I cancelled after I decided to get out of Black Series. So I, I would have had it, but for I me, didn't. gaming, gaming greats could be such a, a great line. Um, the did we really need an archer? Did, did we need him? We've I didn't even like the character in the. I didn't even like the characters yeah. in the computer game. I didn't want a figure of it. Like, but of, of all the characters from the video game, we've still got the rest of the crew that he has that we've still not had. There's that Sith lady woman. I can't remember her name. The Night Sister. The Night Sister yeah. Been, yeah, we could have had her. She'd be an amazing figure. Or even the Sith guy that ends up fighting in the in the tomb with her and stuff. There's yeah. so many cool characters they could have given us. I even made a custom. I even made a custom of him. I can't remember his name off the top of my head now, but I made a custom of him. It's so easy on the Shang Chi mm-hmm. body. Like yeah. it was just they should have uh, made um that a two pack the archer and the the brother you know the, the two made things sense. and not a two pack that people could have bought like two or three of like you said had an army then you would have had three archers and three warriors yeah and now the game's yeah. been out a while I'm really surprised they've never re released the second sister again with the face with the you know with the face mask off like a head yep. like the proper headed version like you see at the end of the bro- <laughs> of the end of the, uh, the, end of the game I'm she was another one vintage that... collection ones. She was so hard to get hold of. If you didn't get her on initial release, she was so hard to get hold of. And I was kind of like, chance. I've got Calcastus. So I've got like customs I've made for the computer game. I've got like the Night Brother on pre-order, but I need a second sister. And I just couldn't get one for love nor money. Well, I could get one for a stupidly high price, but they did do the uh, carbonized mm. version. Mm. But even that became really high, like highly sought after. And I was like, you know what? It, they're too hard to, to get hold of. So I'm not, not in not a nice collection that's good old carbonized yeah. collection it's but they're yeah. always available but come on there's the, there was one one figure release that was the big talking point now let's get on to that was it the vintage collection uh 501st clone clo- 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 trooper ben john yeah nobody <laughs> yeah that one that one obviously <laughs> um, no, it was definitely the uh the book of boba fett's uh jammer's palace basically mm. with 50 accessories the spinning grill Throne plat the throne platform that extends Bib Fortuna uh, and for some reason in, on, the press release, on the on, on the press release they have in brackets maybe maybe Ryan can help, can help me why they've called it Dewanga Wanga what what does that mean <laughs> Dewanga Wanga double chins I don't know what that means they've put Bib Fortuna Wanga yeah. on the press release yeah, double chins is that what <laughs> no it doesn't I don't know what no. it means <laughs> <laughs> but can we uh, like if you're listening to this on the podcast? If you could just see the slightly concerned but shocked faces <laughs> of Jake and Ash there, that was like uh, that was, was magical. That? that was a good moment for me. That was, was a good like, moment. Wow. But yeah, for some, I'm I'm reading the press release for all these exams. I got I got the thing from from Litsky, and I'm sort of reading the the press release, and it says Big Fortuna on special card back for Book of Boba Fett, but it, it says Doana Wanga. Uh, anyway, Pulse exclusive and it's two hundred and twenty nine dollars. Or if you're in Britain, it's two hundred pounds. Uh, why? 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 Or why are we paying more than the Americans? <laughs> because we're guaranteed to get something for a change. I don't know. To, yeah, to be honest, crazy, I've stopped trying to work stuff like that out. <laughs> the thing is, so like my my thought about this is that this was basically a Haslab that they decided not to Haslab. Yeah, this is my theory. One hundred percent. They've actually gone well. The vintage stuff always gets funded. The Razor Crest is still in demand, even though it got blown up. People are still crying about the sale barge, myself included, because uh, that was so poorly managed over in the UK. That was awful. Um, you know, I think it should give us a second chance if you're watching this, Hasbro, please. <laughs> um, but I kind of think like, I got the impression that this was a Haslab because all the accessories scream unlockables to me. Mm. The, you know, everything everything about it screams a Haslab. They've just gone, you know what? This is such a popular thing because it's. Return of the Jedi, it's Boba Fett. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. You can just make a street scene. It's basically an entire diorama for once. It's not just bits of something. It's an entire diorama 
Did you see how big it is? It's yeah, 10 it's inches deep and 10 inches tall. Yeah. Yeah, that that's, is huge. It's a proper shelf. That's, like, that's you know a what? big... If I'm going to spend a lot of money on an item, a big ticket item, then it's you like... know what? <laughs> I'll do it. Just had one to hand. Just got my ruler at hand. There you go. That 10 inches. So it's, it's that, <laughs> that, that deep. But well, also, that's... I will say as well, if you think about like the other place that's being like mm. how much they are, you know, mm. like the, the half... That's a the shelf fifth, in a tough... Yeah. <laughs> the, the, um, the, the 50% of the carbon freezing chamber, you know, the, the um, you know, Navarro, uh, you know, the bar in the canteen a bit, you know, being just the bar and a wall, you know, so if you think about those price points and then you think about what you're getting for... It's still a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But at least it does actually feel like more than four times what those other ones are. Cheaper than the Falcon. Mm. Cheaper than the Falcon. Yeah. Falcon's still three hundred pounds. So I mean, this is cheaper than a Falcon, um, which I still want. What, I still. <clears throat> what gets but me it, though is that when you talk about Haslabs, how they can put something like this out at the price point they have, and people go mad for it, but then put something out like the Haslab, and people kind of complain. That's what I don't quite understand. Well, look at me. I'm the guy that sits here and goes, I will never buy a Haslab. This is basically a Haslab and I'm buying it because yeah. it's not a Haslab. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's just an item that is coming out. It's going to be on the shelf and you can get it. I like that. Tell me what the, yeah. you know, this is the cost. These are all the accessories. This is what it does. None of this. You if you, if you back this now, you can unlock this. I hate that concept. Just give yeah. us a product and give us a price. <clears throat> but I think this, this is what that is. This throne that, that we know we want. Yeah, this throne room will be a lesson going forward is that if you announce everything at the beginning, you get the sales, you get the commitment, you get the buy in. Um, well, when, and, well, sorry. I was going to say that's how they should do Haslabs, in my yeah. opinion. I said it before. The moment this dropped on the internet, it went wild. That, that whole mm. video package they put together, again, that video package screamed Haslab. Uh, that, mm. It was a video package they put out, and it, it, that circulated around the internet like wildfire. Yeah. People were yeah. so excited for this thing. It makes me wonder, though, why they didn't put this out as if it was a Haslab, why they didn't put this out at the same time. Or if, if we're working on your theory, you look at when all the Haslabs were announced. You had the Proton Pack, you had the, the plane in the G.I. Joes, you had the, uh, the Galactus and you had obviously the Rancor and stuff. If they had put this out at the uh, Hasbro PulseCon or Hasbro PulseCon twenty. 21 was it i can't remember what yeah it's 2021 wasn't it if they put this out like would it have received the backing because they could have done it with book of boba fett we've obviously um jedi and stuff like they could have easily it would have worked time wise because we saw the palace at the end of mandalorian season two didn't we so they could have put that out as a as a haslab did they hold back because of all the other haslabs that are out there and decide to put the rancor out instead thinking that they were gonna sell both mm. I think it was because of the rancor that the reason this is not coming out as a Haslab. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you reckon are kicking himself for not doing that rancor now that Boba Fett has had a rancor in it? I don't think that many still. Really? The sales of the... Think, yeah. Sorry, go on, Ryan. I was going to say, I don't think... It, the normal rancor is obviously going to go up, you know, the, the, the vintage collection one. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the Black Series one, I just, I still don't think... Because I mean, this has been a bit of a polarizing series. Let's be honest. You know, you know, even what we've been discussing has been a bit polarizing. You know, I just don't think it would have had the push for it. What they revealed for it was not worth the money. That was the simple thing of it. It didn't feel like it was worth the money. And then mm. when they waited so late to say what they were doing, you know, like you said, uh, sorry, like you know, with the, the the plastic bones and a couple of rocks, you know, that kind of thing, and a cardboard display. Whereas this, you know even if they revealed this as a Haslab, this would have done better than Rancor because yeah. it's a huge diorama piece. There's all the accessories. So if you've got already got, like most people have, a 10 ton of Jabba the Hutt Denzians figures, you know, aliens and things, you've now got so much stuff for them all to hold. If you've got your own cantina set, mm. set up, you've got stuff for the cantina people to hold. You know, you could just, if, if you like doing diorama pictures like you, Jay, like, you know, that comes with like 50 accessories, like 50 odd objects for people to hold. Oh, even yeah. that on its own right, you know, the, even the tiny little bits are better. The Rancor had just, it, like we've all said, it was poorly managed. It just, it seemed like they just thought, you know, if we put something on Haslap, it will get backed regardless. Mm. I think they got a bit too overconfident with it and they didn't put the thought into the Rancor. So I don't think the Book of Boba Fett stuff would have really made that much of an impact if they, even if they did the thing now, if they now just did it, 
I don't think I think it'd be the same thing. Yeah, no, I don't think that this is like this isn't selling because of Book of Boba Fett. This is selling because of what it is. It's been seen across so many different platforms, hasn't it? But no, I think that having a, a, a full kind of 360 diorama like this with, like you say, so many accessories, the potential is there. Like if you literally just want to buy it, set it up, put it on a shelf and leave it, it's going to look incredible. If you want to play with it, it's going to look incredible. Like if you're, a, you know, of an age where you would play with a playset, then you know, God forbid you'd actually play play with a playset. But, you know, there's so much potential for the game there. Um, if you take photographs, there's so much potential there. So it, it really is a... If I was collecting vintage collection Star Wars, I'd be straight on it. I'm using it for my vintage figures. Mm. I, I pre-ordered one. It's going to be amazing. But that's going to be all my uh, vintage. I've been using the cardboard place up until now. Yeah. That, I'm using that bad boy. Look at it. And plus, I've got the walls as well. You know, the thing with the... Jabba's, uh, you know, the Han Solo bit. I've got a couple extra walls in that. That's going to take up a whole shelf. That's going to be an entire Jabba shelf. It's going to be amazing. That is going to look good. It is going to look good. I hope that this is the way forward, though. I hope that we do see more diorama stroke play sets. It seems like Vintage Collection are kind of leading the way with that. They've done a few, haven't they? Like the corridors and stuff like that. And like you say, the, the cantina and that. So hopefully this is the way forward. And if this does sell as well as they, they hope it does then maybe you know even a an x-men training room some, or something like that yeah. like it would be yeah. love to see some pre-order figures i'd love to so i reckon they're i reckon that's done more than the rank already mm. yeah if i was a gambling man oh yeah yeah I'm, well there's two two people out of three here have already pre-ordered it and none of us back the rank or so that even, straight even away statistically has again done the pre he followed uh because uh Super Sorrel did the uh, the pre-order ban. He has also been following it. But I know for a fact he has broken the pre-order ban, just like myself, for this exact same thing. And same as you. I broke because... the pre-order ban. As soon as it got announced, I was like, I need that. That's and I don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't want to do... run the risk of not getting it now. You need to think, do your this weekly is check-in, Ryan. Ryan, you need to do your weekly check-in. <laughs> okay, we're going over to Super Sorrel now with the weekly check-in. Ash, have you pre-ordered anything? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Tune in next week. We'll be starting again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally days without pre-order gone back to zero <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Back. it is you need one of those days of no, I, I literally when I said it on because I said it on my video when I when I did my Wookiee Wednesday I basically said straight away I went, I went look I know I'm the, I know I'm, I'm running this whole banning of pre-orders nonsense on the internet right now but I said it I broke my own promise I am buying that thing <laughs> I think you're allowed to for something big and special it's not like you're mm -hmm. just doing like you said, because that's not going to be in the shops. No, never. Like that's you know that's not going to be in H and B or Game or Smiths. So I kind mm. of like this is when pre-orders are good. This yes. is something I think yes, because it's a big ticket item. It's an unusual item. It's a very specific item from a very specific retailer. It, that's when I would pre-order something. Like you, everything else, I'll take my chances in the wild. You know, I'll sort of, I like the hunt a bit. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, something like this. I think this is what pre-orders are for. And the it's fact that Hasbro are so good at the fact that they're not going to take the money until it's ready, and you know what I mean, it's like none of that whole. There's, there's, no, there's no cash coming out now. I don't have to worry no. about it till the back end of the year. So I've got all year to save for it. And it's only two hundred quid, yeah. so I can save that pretty quick. So yeah, it's nice and easy I, to sort of deal the, with. The thing with pre-orders is that, like, you know, I don't want to say back in the day, but even just a few years ago, you know, we weren't finding things out in the wild, but we have been kind of spoiled recently in, in recent years with, mm. with oh, kind yeah. of main, main retailers picking stuff up. And especially when it comes to things like the, the Marvel Legends waves and that, like they are showing up in full in shops and staying there. And there are certain ones as well, like the X-Men wave of the, uh, the, the, the um, Power of X wave and stuff like Charles Xavier's and the, the Sentinels and that are like being sold for like a fiver in these oh, retailers. Um, so he's going for a wee now. And we're going to call him out. <laughs> nope. That D5. I'm, I can't do the big brother voice, but it just looks like the big brother chair. Um, <laughs> but, <fool. that's> it. <laughs> Can Ryan please come to the diary room? Um, dear but, four, no, we... and Ryan, dear four <laughs> Ryan is going for a wee. He'll be back in two moments. D5. <laughs> and Jake and Ash are still not worked out how to do the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's like, he's still his mic on. You're just going to hear the trickling in a minute. I, I was actually going to get some nerdiness, actually. <laughs> but talking about pre orders, like, there are stuff, and there were things that I've not pre ordered, like the Captain America box set, for example, with like, um, 
Sam Wilson and, and uh, Steve Rogers. I didn't pre-order that because I was like, I've got both figures. I don't need to pre-order it. But I kept seeing it in the store and so I eventually bought it. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of, for me, I'm in that routine of, well, if I want something, I need to pre-order it. Because even not too long ago, there were things that were getting missed and they weren't showing up. Whereas now it seems like most of the retailers are picking stuff up. And yeah, it, it does make me kind of a little bit concerned for... Um, oh, <laughs> Yeah, proper dist- yawn there. That's unprofessional, isn't it? Like, sorry, viewers, <laughs> listeners. I just yawned in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> but it does make me concerned about these kind of retailers that have kind of kept us afloat for so long. Is that you're getting so many of these new collectors and seasoned collectors that have you know been around and whatnot that aren't worried about pre-orders that they don't see that as a way of collecting. And I get uh, no exaggeration across social media channels. I'll get at least two or three messages a day from people asking how to pick up a certain figure that I've shown because, mm. oh, it's not in the shops. So like it, I've not seen this one in the shops. And it's like, okay, well, check out these people or check out Hasbro polls. Or, and you're kind of pointing people in the right direction. But they kind of assume that because it doesn't show up in Smiths, it's a really hard to get yeah, item. I can... And I just think, you know, that it's great that we've got like new collectors and stuff, but people don't know about these geeky shops and these geeky like e-tailers and stuff and i don't know i don't know to be don't fair know going with that, but. to be fair i wouldn't have known half of them if i weren't in the facebook groups to be honest <laughs> there's yeah, so many out there yeah my main yeah. source is when people shout about it on the groups that's the only yeah, people know. like or people like these you know like you guys right. you know put me onto things as well i did have i did have some acquisitions though speaking of the jabba's palace and this is what i went to go and get go so, my you know my favorite third party vintage star wars maker yep yeah, stand stand solo. Done it again. So we've got a vintage Garindin. Nice. Proper vinyl cape and everything. And he's even got the little the walkie-talkie bet he uses to dob them all in. And most relevant to the place that we pre-ordered, this is a vintage style slave layer. We nice. It is again the, the quality <clears throat> on them is just it is their Kenner. They're as Kenner as Kenner can be. But yeah, how good is that? That is really so, cool. When I have my vintage uh, Star Wars display set up with the new Jabba's Palace by the end of the year or beginning of next year, whenever it is, you know, I can now actually have the full uh, the full character spread in vintage my, form. My only problem, and like you know that I'm kind of into my three and three quarter inch now with Marvel, so you know, I'm not totally hating. But how do you make Slave Leia like lay down? She's just <laughs> No, you can't have a lay in next to Jabba, can you? That's not what she looked like in the film. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got again. You don't understand. See, look, you're still new to this game, mate. No, that's what three, three quarter inches. inches you though. kind of get them. But, but... Yeah, but lightsabers they don't fight like this either. <laughs> you know, it's called um, what's the word? Imagination. Oh, I haven't got any of that, mate. No. That's why you don't customize. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm joking. Mean. I'm joking. No, but yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It, obviously, you don't get like the movie accurate things, but it's the thing is the vintage question. That's why I, I totally get why you're like you're you're not that into three and three quarter inch because I do get because I mean, you like the hyper real like with the, the flexibility, the ability to change the poses and everything like that. You know, if if you love that stuff, vintage Star Wars is not a big tick box for you guys. Like you know, uh, the vintage collection, yes, but the actual vintage stuff. You know the five points of articulation. No, that is that is proper nostalgia type thing purely more, more than anything. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I just I'm just happy on that train. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe one day I'm just going to sell off my entire collection and just chase down vintage Star Wars figures. <laughs> just fill all these cabinets with the every vintage figure I can get my hands on. That will never uh, happen. You're a Marvel. Guy. You're the Marvel guy. It won't. It won't. I like my Marvel so much, but I do like the uh, I do like the three and three quarter inch. Marvels. I'm very much looking forward to the new wave coming out very soon. Good. We'll say that much. Um, was there anything Marvel else? Marvel retro thinking? figures will surely fund my Death Star. <laughs> so there were the pipeline reveals as well, which were quite good, to be honest. I'm excited yep. for these. So um, they obviously did the whole, <clears throat> like the archive lines getting a bunch of them as well. <clears throat> so they are re releasing the Boosh Slave layer, uh, sorry, Boosh Princess layer. Uh, so she's coming back. Uh, Grand Moff Tarkin was a random one because I thought he wasn't that 
long ago. Do they really need him again? Mm-hmm. But like you say, people need him. So Grandma Tarkin, uh, New Hope Chewbacca, and then randomly a Force Awakens Han Solo. <laughs> Random. Yeah, but that's because no, no, no. There mm. is a reason behind this the because st- no, the the hair color. It. Um, ah. Steve spoke to me. I think it was either on the behind the toys interview. It might no, it wasn't a gay week. Um, I think it was behind the toys episode. Mm. But he has a grey haired Han Solo. But when it went into production, it was like a lighter coloured hair. Yeah. Well, so it wasn't well. accurate to how he looked on the screen. So there's only a handful. I think there was like two or three cases, Steve said, of these grey haired hand solos that went mm. out and then it was changed and then mass, produ- mass produced with a lighter coloured hair. So it wasn't accurate to step hand solo in the film. So I think that they're re-releasing him with grey hair. So it essentially be a very similar figure to what they've already released, just more accurate hair colouring which sounds like the most ridiculous kind of re-release ever. But if you've got a setup and you're looking at a figure that doesn't match how they look, I can see why that's frustrating. So, But the uh, the best part was the fact that they, really, they announced three figures, which I called, may I just say, at the beginning of the year, I called this straight out. So I'm, yep. so, happy, I'm so happy with myself. Uh, Ayla Sakura, we've been needing her for so long. So Ayla Sakura is coming to uh, the 16th line. Uh, Darth Maul to go with our to go with our Ahsoka. They're giving us the mm-hmm. season seven Darth Maul, so the more modernized Darth Maul. Uh, and of course, Rogue One Saw Gerrera is finally getting a figure. Happy yes, days. Yes, that's that's that. I was pleased to see that one. He's definitely needed a needed a figure for a while. Um, this crosses over into so many different stories in the different franchises, <laughs> doesn't it? So how they haven't done him already? Boys, I don't know. Deception. <laughs> <laughs> Clone Wars, Rebels, Rogue One, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. He's been in literally every form yeah. of Star Wars now. He's like the, the, the character that ties it together that nobody knows about. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, but yeah. Um, was there anything else major this week that came up anywhere? Or are we, I think we've covered it. it. I um, think we can put a bow on it. I think it's all wrapped up. <laughs> That's yeah, sort well, of a good close. It's better than the actual close. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, other than the uh, the big Star Wars news, obviously that um, a lot of Americans are now finding in their targets that the next wave of, of Black Series is already out. <laughs> They're already yeah. finding the new um, Ahsoka and uh, the, the the client of is he called from the Mandalorian? Yeah, uh, yeah, that that wave is starting to appear in targets apparently, and that wave is due here in England in March when we've still not had the last wave, which is now due in April. So our our uh, distribution has gone proper squiff at the minute. Don't know what's going on. Because Smiths, oh, right. Smiths were meant to be getting the recent wave this month, and then they've suddenly put it back, and it's now apparently April that we're getting um, the, that wave. But yet we're expected to get the, like, the newest wave in like a month's time. I don't know. They've gone mental. Random. <laughs> that, that Random. Was there was no other toy news this week. That was literally it. No. Um- Marvel Legends wise, you had the uh, the X Men wave full of random characters that pre-orders went up for. The Bone Breaker build a figure wave um, pre-orders went up for. Um, that's drew out. I think it's November. I think it's like end of the year. Yeah, the it's X-Men it's a cool. Doesn't go with it's, itself. It's it, yeah. I mean, none of the characters tie with any of them. They've got a Wolverine in really? there, of course, and a Sabre Two fits. It's a weird one, but yeah, I'm getting it. So. Um, <laughs> Hey, who would have guessed? But yeah, so that's that's about it. I think I think that wraps up our week. Um, I won't be here next week. I'm having a. I'll be off for next week. You won't, will you? We. Yeah. I'll be. It sounds have, me. The listeners rejoice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're um, gonna be like the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll come back as a special guest star. <laughs> I uh, I hate to say it, but we have got a guest next week. Have we? Yeah. Who is it? I was going to talk to you about it in a minute. I'll tell you in a bit, but we have got a guest next oh, week. It's going to be someone I really um, want to be on thing is, isn't it? I think it might be. Um, have you done but this we'll deliberately because I'm not here? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Right. Um, I don't know if we've got a guest. We're not, I'm not, I've got a, I've got something coming out, and I'm, I'm thinking they might join Geek Week as a guest. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but mother flipper. Yeah, it's not them. <laughs> um, 
But that's it. Now that is it for the week. So if you are listening on podcasts, and obviously we do appreciate you, please do continue to download, share, all of those things. Um, if you haven't listened to us on podcasts, then go and check us out. We're on all the main podcasting platforms. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. If you are watching on YouTube, then again, thanks very much for watching. Do appreciate you. Uh, check the, uh, the description below for the Dent Gents D's House. And if you don't already follow them, make sure that you do. And of course, give us a like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. Um, Geek Week in Review is now on Instagram and Facebook. So go and check those out as well. And I think that's about everything. Thank you very much for watching. This was episode 35, which is madness. Yeah. And we are going to be back next week for episode 36. So until then, uh, keep it geek. Keep it geek. Geek, we can review.